Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome back to Canard Boulevard. Today we are going to hunt down that voltage drop coming from the alternator and have a look and see why my wife is so cold in the back seat of my cozy. All right, so I have my 30 amp power supply hooked up right at the alternator. And as you can see, it's showing that it is drawing close to 12 amps, 11.7 amps. And I, if I measure the voltage right here, the voltage I'm seeing is 13.78. The G3X is reporting 13.0 volts and 11 amps. So quite a bit lower in terms of voltage. So let's make a few other measurements here. This is, let's see, the line coming in from the alternator is right here. So this is the coming from the alternator. I've dropped 0.2 volts just from here to the alternator, which might indicate that this wire is undersized. And it could be a bit warm. So let's have a look and see at that. 13.7 on the left side of the alternator solenoid, on the output of the alternator solenoid, I got 13.45 or 49, so 13.5. So I'm, I'm losing 0.15 volts just through this little solenoid right here, which is definitely warming up. And that is my alternator shutoff solenoid. So that contactor is rated for 100 amps continuous. I'm drawing only 10 amps through it and I'm dropping 0.2 volts. So that's a problem right there. So then from there, let's measure over here on the first side of the shunt, and we're at 13.5, which is the same as here, that's fine. The other side of the shunt, 13.5, that's correct. And then we are getting over to here, the master, 13.5, and here. 13.5 and then on the battery terminal itself 13.5 so everything from the battery terminal up to that contactor is good however that contactor is dropping 0.2 volts at only 12 amps of current and then we've also got a current drop between here and the alternator so the alternator actually comes in here and the, the it's switched right there to disconnect the alternator if it ever had a over voltage but as you can see, I'm showing 13.7 right there. And on this side, 13.5453. So I'm 0.2 there. And I had 13. Point, was it 13.7? 13.68. And if you go to the other end of that wire, which is the alternator itself, here I'm getting 13.77. So that's still showing only 13.1 on the Garmin, which is nowhere near high enough. Um, however, the Garmin input is pulling off the radio, I believe the, actually the panel power feed, which is going back to that EIS. Do I have a way of reading that? Not easily. So I guess the next step after this then is to pull the connector off that EIS and check to see exactly what voltage is going into the EIS, which is what Garmin is reading. I suspect what's happening is because it's actually just pulling the main power off that EIS, is that it's coming up here, it's going to through that master up here to the through this master switch, uh, through the panel power switch and the panel power circuit breaker then all the way back there and that's where it's measuring the voltage after it's gone through several switches and circuit breakers and that I suspect is where we're getting the other uh, 0.4 volts dropped. It's too bad that Garmin doesn't have a, a way of offsetting that built into the G3X that I know about. I don't think they do. But I still do have to have a look at that contactor. That's no good. I have reached out to Lamar, the manufacturer of this contactor, to ask if this type of voltage drop is typical and normal for this contactor because it's not mentioned in their spec sheets. 
Uh, once I get a reply from them, I'll decide what I have to do going forward, if I'm going to replace this or if this is just something that I have to expect from this type of contactor. The next test of this, the camera didn't record, unfortunately. So what I did is I pulled the connector apart on the EIS and sure enough, the bus voltage that is powering the EIS, which is the voltage that it actually reads to determine what the bus voltage is, is that low 13.0, 13.1 volts. So I was right, the, the source of the voltage drop is coming from the fact that it goes all the way up to the front through the breakers and switches and everything and then all the way to the back again powering the EIS. It's more than enough power to run the EIS, but it's not a good representation of what the true bus voltage is. Fortunately, the EIS is very configurable. There are many different inputs on there. There's another input there that will read from 0 to 28 volts or whatever you want to put in there, and you can designate in the configuration as to what input it's going to look at to determine your, your bus voltage. In fact, you can have multiple bus voltages in there. So if you have multiple buses, the different batteries and so on, it will read the voltage of all of those. In any case, now that I found that out, I could take a fused lead directly off the bus and put it into that currently unused input on the Garmin EIS, and that will give it a true a view of exactly what the bus voltage is and so then I will have a true representation on the G3X of what the current voltage is. That said, that still doesn't explain why I'm seeing a gradual voltage drop over time as I'm flying. And the point of this test was to discover if that was a electrical problem. So that's why I put that high current 30 amp power supply on there in place of the alternator and then turned on virtually everything to create as high a, a current load uh, on the system as I could. So I've got landing lights everywhere. So I've got everything turned on. So it is drawing the maximum amount of power. And then I let it sit like that for over two hours and I monitored the voltage the entire time. Actually, what I did is I had the G3X recorded in a data card so that I can look at it later and I can see if there's any sags at any point. And there wasn't. The voltage was constant. It was consistent. It didn't change at all. So the only thing left in the chain is the alternator belt. The alternator belt did look a little bit worn and glazed to me. When I did reinstall that new alternator, I attentioned to that belt correctly but it's possible because of the glazing, as the engine and the systems heat up, it's just slipping. So because I'm replacing the alternator belt when I put the new propeller on anyway, I'm calling the electrical good. Once I have that EIS hook up to the main bus done, uh, and then I'll put on the new belt, tension it per Lycoming specs, get the prop on there. I'm suspecting that this is the end of the voltage drop mystery. The next issue is the canopy. My wife was complaining when we were flying back from Florida, it was quite cold when we got back up to Ohio, and she was freezing and she said there's cold air blowing in here and I can see daylight through the canopy, through the, the edges of the canopy. Uh, I had her take a couple of pictures so you can see, yes, there's definitely daylight showing there and, and there was cold air blowing in. So I had a look to see if I could figure out what is going on. I can't look at the canopy when it's closed because in order to close and latch the canopy, I have to be inside the airplane. So what I did is I set up the camera at several different angles and set it to record video as I closed and latched the canopy. And then I had to look inside as best I could to see if I could see light penetration around it and what might be causing it.
So I'm thinking maybe there's something to do with the thermal uh, expansion, maybe the different coefficient of expansion between the materials or th maybe thicknesses of the canopy that opens against the turtle back here that's maybe causing the canopy to to be in a slightly different shape or orientation or or, or it's just not seated properly at the back. I've never noticed it at the front, but at the back, uh, I'm going to have to have a look, but it, I'm not quite sure, but I won't be able to really test that for sure, that theory, until I get the plane up and flying again in really cold weather where you know, it's approaching or near freezing and see if I see those same gaps. And if that is the issue, then... Well, then I don't really know what the answer is. I'm going to have to do some more research. But uh, I'm suspecting that what it might, that may be what it is because I have not seen it since. And uh, yes, that one hold down was misadjusted. That could account for some of it. But uh, we'll, we'll have to have a look and see. And so I'm going to put this one on the back burner for now until I have the ability to, to capture more data. I had a couple of people contact me about the Fumoto oil drain valve that I put on here and they said, you know, you can get a clip for that to lock the lever so that it can't possibly open in flight. And I said, yeah, I know. I actually have one. You can see it down there right now. I just didn't put it on in the video before, but that clip goes on there and it secures the lever. Now the lever, even if something were to fly up in here and hit it, it still wouldn't release because this clip, it, it's jammed in there and it, you'd have to pull it forward against that clip, which you can't do. So... And then when you want to change the oil, you pull that clip off, pull the lever forward to unlock it, pull it down to the bottom, and then it opens the valve and drains the oil. All right, so that's another day gone. I had hoped I was going to get more done today than I did, but uh, I did get some done. I at least found some issues with the electrical, which I now have a path forward. At least I know what I'm looking at. Uh, I was hoping to get to some of the... Uh, heating duct work but I realized that uh, in order to get this off I need an assistant on the other side holding a wrench and I tried to do it on my own with some tape and things it just wasn't working so I'm gonna get my daughter or other assistant out here I did get to look at the uh, nose gear extractor you can see this bent bracket here um, the spring is loose which is good so um, I'm gonna actually pull that off of there clean it up lubricate it get that bent back into shape and I do need to get some wires run up to those micro switches up there so that I can have gear indication on my G3X, which will be great. And I did do some adjustment and, and tests on the canopy itself. One of these, this, this latch here in particular was not adjusted properly. So I adjusted that and now it seems to be closing properly. So electrical work and this electrical work is ongoing. I'm still building a new one of these at home. And uh, that's about it for today. That's it for this episode. There will be lots more coming. There's a whole lot of work and a big revelation coming in next week's video. I hope you like what you saw. Please click like and subscribe if you do. It really helps me out when you do that. And if you have just 10 seconds, leave me a comment. If you have any corrections, suggestions, comments, leave them in the comment section below. I read and really appreciate all of those comments. Thanks for watching.